Okay, um, let's pray together and then we will start. Um, can I request one of the students online um, to pray? And we'll start. Yes, Pastor Alfred. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day. Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. As we are going to start our class, my Father, help us to understand more of from your word, my Father, Lord. Help us to know you more, my Jesus. And I pray, my Father, God, Lord, help Pastor to teach us more uh, uh, from your word, and Lord, give your re more revelation to him, my Father, God. I thank you, Lord. I surrender all class into your hands. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so um, as we go along, uh, I will um, post simple exercises on uh, Google Classroom. Okay, these are not, I should not tell you, but these are not graded, meaning uh, <laughs> these are not for your final grade. Okay, this is just to check your learning. Okay, uh, so, but you have to do it. Okay, <laughs> don't, <laughs> so don't, oh, I'm not going to get a grade, so I don't need to do it. No, these are knowledge checks. Okay, just to um, just more for you to revise the content. Um, and again, it's not like an exam or something. Uh, it's more for you to go back, go to the notes, and see. All right. Um, so these things will be put on Google Classroom. So, and of course, and also in the e-learning uh, portal, so that uh, everyone, uh, in-person students, online students, and then the e-learning students, you'll all get to. Do it. These are just knowledge checks, uh, not graded, but just to make sure that uh, you're following the content. And of course, if there are any questions, uh, you can always ask. So let's um, quickly review some of the things that we've covered in the course so far, and then we will move forward. So lesson one, we introduced uh, 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 this on page four. We introduced what is apologetics. We looked at the how the Lord Jesus. Um, let me just go ahead and share my screen. It's pretty hot here. Right. So we introduced what apologetics is. We said the Lord Jesus Himself was um, a great apologist. We looked at the Apostle Peter in his ministry, Paul in his ministry. Uh, we talked about, you know, the importance of um, understanding the spiritual side of things, right? It's not just about us convincing somebody intellectually. That is important to answer the questions, but also understand what's happening uh, in the realm of the Spirit. Then we went into lesson two. Uh, page number seven, uh, we began with a very basic question on, on the existence of God, right? So we looked at what does the Bible say about God? Some of the core things, right? Uh, his, uh, uh, the fact that God is infinite in time, power, and understanding. Uh, we talked a little bit about the atheist and the agnostic. Right? Uh, how they look at this and what is the flaw in their thought process on this. Okay. Um, then we looked at a theological response. What does the Bible say about the existence of God? We put it down in points. And then uh, we, we looked at a philosophical response uh, to this. That means... Okay, if you don't want me to quote chapter and verse, fine. Let's think logically. Right? So some people are okay if you show them from the Bible, chapter and verse. Some people, okay, you tell me without, without referring to the Bible. It's okay, fine. Let's look at it from philosophical. That means just looking at life, thinking about life, logic, what can we say? So we talked about cause and effect. Uh, we talked about the fact that creation requires a creator or design requires a designer. We talked about morality and rationality. right? So that's kind of where we stopped last week. 
that means lifeless matter if we were just matter lifeless matter cannot take on morality and rationality right so if i keep a rock here you leave that stone here for however long you want the stone is not going to develop a brain of its own suddenly it'll start thinking <laughs> keep it however long you want it's a stone it'll remain a stone right now generally speaking our bodies physical bodies are just matter right it's made up of material which will decay so if we say there is no god and we are just matter how did we get the ability to reason that is rationality and morality consciousness of right and wrong you ask any person in the world anywhere you know is it exam is giving example is it right to murder somebody any part of the world you go uh, people are generally say no it's not right to murder somebody it's not right so how come how come we are all we are all having the same morality it doesn't matter which culture which language what is it right is murder going and killing somebody is right or wrong everybody will say it's wrong i mean unless of course there's war or self defense or something but generally you can't just go and kill somebody like that random you no know, how how did we all get this sense of morality where did it come from if we are only matter right so this is again a very logical question that you can ask somebody right the matter cannot acquire rationality morality it has to be given therefore we are saying somebody greater than us gave it to us right? god created gave it to us right so we stopped over there and then the last uh, uh, point number 4 is we can point to supernatural phenomena that means we can see some things which we cannot explain so example uh demonic manifestation right uh when we see people who are demon possessed and they are manifesting even psychologists and psychiatrists cannot explain it they can explain human behavior this that is their field they're studying human behavior till a certain point why people are behaving like this they can explain till a certain point but then when you come to demon possess cannot explain it is they call it paranormal beyond normal we cannot explain we don't have it's that space that we can't explain we don't know but the same person who is demon possessed can receive deliverance in the name of jesus then that person is very normal sitting and talking properly so then we ask the question okay if demons are real because we can see that manifestation with our eyes and that person is behaving like this that is real it is happening you can't say it's not happening it is happening but we can't explain it then that person is delivered in the name of jesus and he's normal he or she is normal then the name of jesus is real so demons are real that means jesus is also real to the greater power yeah jesus you can't see but it was his name that brought deliverance so that is outside the scope of explanation so i remember once like uh, this when i was running my software company uh, we used we, one part of the work was we were building software for 
medical medical field and one of the one of the areas we were we were building software for for was for the mental health this was the psychologist in the us i remember going there i was spending time so i was just talking to him and we were designing the system and so i was talking to him and he's a psychologist qualified all of that so then i asked him i said uh do you know about demon possession yeah so can you explain it I said no we can't we, we we can't explain that it is outside our study and scope but it's there but we can't explain it so psychiatry or psychology only goes so far then beyond that you know but it is supernatural in yeah. this uh some mic is on okay uh in this demon possessed also uh, the psychiatry uh, can explain until uh, up to that they say some kind of a hallucination and uh, they hallucinate continuously and it, they believe that they are that person like the you know you know two three behaviors that they uh, you know they mm. act like mm. two three per people in different stages so some people try to push this and they don't believe in the demonic power or... yeah so see psychology like we said psychiatry psychology they can explain certain behaviors right so schizophrenia you know they look at dual personality these kinds of things they will explain okay a person is manifest person is hearing voices because of something or uh, certain areas but you go beyond that and you see a person who's demon possessed who's man manifesting that is completely you cannot cannot explain that that kind of behavior i mean they may say it's what they can give it a name they can give it a label but why is that person behaving that way can't explain so that is where and even if you can you know, even if you give it a label or something uh, the the amazing thing is that person receives deliverance in the name of jesus you know uh so how it is not giving some medicine and <laughs> curing it's in the name of jesus that person is receiving deliverance you know so that becomes uh uh you know we can just present that it's a it's it's a very you know from a looking at from a supernatural perspective right so lastly number 5 again this more of a philosophical moral type of question or response if there is no god there is no moral law without god life is meaningless that means it's just something we hear we do something we go there is no meaning there is no hope there is no recovery So that means, if you take God out of the equation, take God out of the picture, there is no morality, there is no meaning, there is no hope, and there is no recovery. Nothing is nothing. Life is meaningless. Right? You're just here. You're doing something. You die. And you go. and that's why if there is no sense of god uh even young people when people at a very early age they they lose all reason to live there's no what is life no meaning why should i live anyway i work hard for what yeah. what what is the meaning of life is there anything beyond this right so when when people come to that place without god there's no reason to live finish right so these are just five philosophical uh uh responses we can give to people for the existence of god right so one we said cause and effect two creation and design requires a creator and a designer morality and rationality number four experiencing supernatural phenomena you know? and five is okay just imagine life without god what will it be right imagine that okay so 
Now we are going to go to lesson number three, where we're just talking a little bit about faith and science, and then we will get into the scientific aspects of creation and related questions and so on. Um, faith and science. So here again, there's a lot of debates. Can you have faith? And the, the big debate is this. Can you have faith and still uh, be a scientist or do or believe in I'm not believe in science, meaning you engage with science. You know, that's the big question. So there are some people who will argue. Uh, if you have faith, you cannot have anything to do with science. But then there are people, there are great scientists in the world today who are highly qualified in the field, very accomplished, but they are also believers. They are also people of faith, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so and uh, if you look at the history of science, right from the early, you know, what we would refer to as scientists, the people who began to discover new things in science, and we have some of the names, the pioneers, Galileo, Kepler, Pascal, uh, Boyle, Newton, Faraday, they were all actually believers in God. It was not like these people were atheists. They were actually all believers in God. But they were all scientists. They were pioneering. And they were the ones who made breakthrough discoveries in their day and time. You know? And then, of course, over time, as time passed by, it slowly became fashionable that if you're a scientist, you don't believe in God. You know? And they tried to disprove the existence of God. So what we want to do is, we want to, in this lesson, we want to show that Actually, faith and science can go together, and faith brings the balance. It gives you uh, clarity in scientific discovery. Okay? So it's not like science does away with God, faith. It's not like that. It can be together. You can have faith, you can do science. Hmm? So, does science contradict the Christian faith? So it is a wrong presupposition that these two cannot be together, you know. And so some people argue, oh, if you're a person of faith, you can't believe in science, you can't do science. No, 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 it's not true, right? Because for us, science is an investigation into God's creation. So, when you're doing science, whether you're studying biology, botany, zoology, physics, astronomy, whatever you're studying, it is an investigation into God's So when you discover something amazing, it only makes you stand in awe of God. When you run into things you cannot explain, then it says, okay. This is God. He's bigger than our understanding. But we will continue to search. We will continue to research. Maybe we will understand. We will explain. We will, we will understand things. Right? So we are not... Uh, when you get a new discovery or when you hit something that you don't know anything about, both make you stand in awe of God. Something you can explain, something you can't explain, both make you stand in awe of God. It's not like when you're doing science, you are eliminating God. Right? Whether you discover something great or you discover something you don't understand, it's okay. You're still in awe of God, right? So, uh, and and we can point to all of these. Uh, great pioneers, right? So let's look at some scripture. Um, Psalm 115, verse 16. Uh, Psalm 115, 
and uh, verse 16, I'll just open up Esword so we can look at it there. Um, Psalm 115 and uh, verse number... What, what is this? Verse 16, right? The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth He has given to the children of... So the psalmist is saying, the heavens are the Lord's. The earth, he has entrusted it to us, to people. Right? That means you and I are responsible for the earth. So just a side note, right? We'll probably look up one of these questions later. You know, should we take care of the planet? Right? So nowadays, there's a lot of effort going on in climate change. Uh, environment, right? Uh, should we take care of the planet? Well, if God put us in charge, is it the right thing to take care of the planet or not? Of course. Right? He put us in charge. So we have to do our best, right? To take care of it. I'm not saying we can solve all the problems, but whatever is in our control, we have to do. Right? Because it says here, verse 16, the earth he has given to the children of men. So, that was just a side note. But look at it like this. God has given the earth to us. So is it wrong to explore? Is it wrong to study? Is it wrong to investigate, to research, whether you look at a cell under a microscope? <laughs> it is not wrong. The earth he gave to us, so and study it. Explore it, research it, uh, investigate, try to understand what you can, and then leverage it for good use, not destructive use. Like, you know, you can use it for both, right? If you know that, oh, I can make fire, you can use fire to cook or you can use fire to destroy it, right? Yeah, so use it for good. So, whatever discovery you make, see how it can help others or benefit life on earth because whatever we discover can be used for good or can be used in a destructive sense right but so but we're just thinking about this verse right the earth he has given to us so nothing wrong in investigating leveraging the good things making use of what is there nothing wrong he gave it to us to take care of and use let's go to isaiah 28 a very interesting passage here in Isaiah 28, and uh, we're going to look at verses 23 to 29. Isaiah 28, 23 to 29. So Isaiah says, Give ear and hear my voice, listen and hear my speech. Does the plowman, that is the farmer, keep plowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods? When he has leveled its surface, does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin? Plant the wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place, and the spelt in its place? For he, that is God, instructs him in right judgment. His God teaches him. For the black cumin is not threshed with a sledge, nor, a, nor is a cartwheel rolled of the cumin, but the black cumin is beaten out with a stick and the cumin with a rod. Bread flour must be ground, therefore he does not thresh it forever, break it with his cartwheel or crush it with his horsemen. This also comes from the Lord of hosts who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. What's he saying? I'll paraphrase it. Saying, look at the farmer. He does not keep on just tilling the ground and think, 
something will grow out of the ground. No. He breaks the ground, but then he puts seed into the ground. And for each kind of plant, he knows how to sow the seed. He knows for wheat, you put it in a row, whatever. I don't know too much, but <laughs> the farmer knows how to put things correctly in the ground. And he also knows how to harvest it. Each kind of crop is harvested differently. Then he also knows how to convert the wheat to flour. He knows. So then he's asking, the, as yes, the prophet is saying, how does the farmer know all this? And two times he says, God gives him the understanding. God gives him the wisdom. Huh? Both in verse 26 and verse 29. God gives him this understanding. Yeah? God is the one who is showing him the farmer how to do these things with his creation. See, this is the ground, this is how you put the seed, this is how you harvest it, this is how you can process it. God is the one who is giving him this understanding. Twice he says, hmm? verse 26 and verse 29. Now, this was during Bible times, uh, more than 2,000 years ago. Today, things are different. Now, we, do, we, we explore in labs. We do research in the labs, we, you know, there's so many other things. So, but it is the same principle. That is, as we are studying God's creation, as we are researching, as we are seeing how best to do things, in that process, God is involved. God is giving us understanding how to make the best use of what He has put in. In, yeah, on the earth. He's giving. So, example, okay. We, you know, we, we discovered nuclear energy some several decades ago. Okay, that is one form of energy. And there are several forms of energy. Before that, hydroelectric, hydroelectric power, there's wind, there's waves, all kinds of things, light energy. We discovered. Now, that energy can be used in a beneficial way to generate electricity, to take care of the homes and people's things, power, different things. Or that energy can be used to blow up an entire city, destroy. But God has helped us discover that energy, how we use it. Our responsibility. If some people go and do bad things, we don't blame God. God is helping us discover what He has put in creation. So this is a scientific process. Right? What is the scientific process? It is discovery of what God has put. And God Himself is helping us in the scientific process. That means you can imagine the scientists who are sitting in the lab doing experiments. God's hand is on him. God is guiding that person. They're thinking, they're reasoning. How do I make the best use of it? Right? So now we have you know, so much, even in agriculture, we can do so many things with crops. You know, how we can grow crops even in difficult conditions. Uh, so many things. But it's for the benefit of people. right? So, But God is involved in the scientific process. So we're not saying... If you're a scientist, you have to be an atheist. No. If you're a scientist, God is there. Believe in God. He'll help you understand these things. Discover these things. Right? And um, what was the other verse I wanted us to look at? Romans 1 and verse 20. We have seen this before. But let's go look at it again. Somebody could read it. Romans chapter 1 and uh, verse 20. And then we'll take any questions. Romans 1 verse 20. Somebody could read it. Romans 1 verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 
even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Thank you. So, his invisible attributes are seen where in his creation. Right. So, when we are studying creation, we are actually having a chance to encounter the attributes of God. How wise God is, how brilliant His design, how it's just fascinating how things have been done. Right? So, the study of God's creation is really leading us to an encounter with the invisible attributes of God. And we can also have testimony, we see testimonies of, of scientists as they study and go through their scientific process, they eventually, I'm not saying everybody, but some of them choose to believe in God. So like, this is amazing. So they eventually come to faith in God. So the sign, this, the this going through the scientific journey actually has led some people, some of them to God, believe in God, because of they're actually encountering the attributes of God. This is so amazing, right? So what we're emphasizing now is that science does not contradict our Faith, right? So, any questions so far? Everybody's with me. Um, okay, there's a question on the chat. Um, believers who are doctors and psychologists are definitely in a better place where they can draw from God and also use science with the balance. Uh, uh, is this inference correct? So. Those who are doctors and psychologists, and when they can draw from God. Well, actually, um, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I really understood the question, but I, 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 my response would be something like this: that all of us uh, have, uh, you know, regardless of our our, our education or our vocation, uh, we are all in a good place to, you know. To relate to God and draw from Him, um, and uh, but I'm not sure what you're getting at, Jachin. Maybe um, now you also say and use science with balance. So yeah, definitely they are in a good place to use science with balance. That means believers who are in the scientific field, um, they have a lot of ethical and moral sense that comes along with their scientific inclination so it's a good balance otherwise science without the ethical and moral balance to it can just you know be used for anything uh, very destructive also so uh, the second part of what you're saying yeah i agree with it the first part my thought would be that you know all of us do have access to god um, equal uh, equally and we can draw from him uh, where we are so I'm not sure if I really answered your question, Jachin, but no. Uh, yes, Pastor. I was just asking uh, about the doctors who really don't know God and uh, people who are in the medical field who are already believers. Uh, just the comparison between those two. Oh, okay. So you're comparing. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I understand. Thank you. Yes. Thank then, uh, yeah, and then that sense, uh, believers who are in the medical profession, uh, you know, they are able to see their medical practice as a vehicle to serve people, and they also invite God to work through that. Uh, and, and so they're in a better, definitely a better place uh, to see God work through them. Yeah. All right, any questions? Come. Sorry. Uh, sir, regarding a uh, supernatural phenomena, like uh, we talked about, like uh, how we can like 
uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, they can't explain this uh, demonic position. And uh, we talked about like they get deliverance in the name of Jesus, which is true. But if we see right now, like we can also see some people from other religion also they do this tricks to cast out demons and all. So when when we are like using this point to make uh, our statement and when if they are like they are also taking that one how we can like defend because they will also tell see our through our religion also we are doing deliverance our god is also real how we can uh defend that one okay so then we kind of get into another space of uh comparative uh faiths um so okay so the thing is this the point we were trying to establish is that there is supernatural. There is the supernatural realm, which cannot be explained uh, through the natural knowledge we have. And so because there is a supernatural, therefore we say there is the presence of God, right? Because if there's the presence of evil, that ha which is countered by uh, light or by good, then God is there. So that was our point. Now, if somebody in that argument goes to the next level, which is like like you you brought up, uh, comparing things. Now, even for that, we do have an answer, uh, although it's not necessarily in 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 this line of thought. That is in in the, proving the existence of God. But that's uh, you know when that if that kind of question comes up, we know that uh, the Bible teaches us that even Satan does lying signs and wonders, right? So Satan himself. Is engaged in doing lying signs and wonders, right? So, example, quick references: uh, we have um, Second Thessalonians chapter two, we have First Corinthians chapter eleven or ten. Sorry, Second Corinthians. What did I say? Um, Second Thessalonians chapter two, and uh, um, verse, verse nine. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 9. So the working of Satan, Satan's work, how he does work with power, signs, and lying wonders. Okay, Second Thessalonians 2 9. Paul also writes in Second Corinthians chapter 10, and uh, he talks about uh, sorry, chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, right, uh, verse fourteen. Second Corinthians eleven, fourteen says Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light, right? So he's talking about false workers and apostles, whatever. The, so that is even Satan pretends to be like a good, like an angel of light. Right, he does lying signs and wonders. Right, so you can imagine how the orchestration happens um, between demonic powers. The eventual goal is to deceive people. Right, so they they can you know work through people to cause lying signs and wonders. So example, if somebody is demon possessed. They go to um, a person who's practicing witchcraft or sorcery or something. They go to this person. He will do some mantra, this, that. He will do. That person seems to have deliverance or relief. But his condition could have gotten worse. We don't know. But the sign, the appearances, that person seems to have got relief. But Satan's objective is achieved. That means people are deceived. That is the ultimate objective, is to capture the souls of people. So he does lying signs and wonders. The world. It's called lying signs and wonders because that is how he blinds people. Right? So we have a theological explanation for it. We have the understanding for it. Um, but you know, going back to our original thought, that shows the existence of the su the supernatural realm, the spiritual realm. Shows. Anand, your question. 
And when and scientists are doing this, all these experiments and all, we can find these attributes of God in this uh, creation. Mm. Like, is there any examples we can give? Like, someone said, like, like uh, from their their point of view, is there any examples like that they found that attributes of God in this creation? Yeah. So when you say attributes of God, for instance, it's primarily the wisdom of God. Right. So you look at the design of the cell, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. And uh, you go down to the even the design of a single protein molecule. Right. So you go down all the way to that, and you see the amazing wisdom of God. And so, and that is one example. But you can look at so many things around us. And, and and so the wisdom that is an attribute of God, or you look at the heavens, the stars. So just look at one star, the sun. The amount of energy that's coming out is so great, right? And I, I don't have the numbers here, but it's like you know, huge amount of energy emanating from one star, sun. And sun is a small star. It's not like a big star in the universe. In the universe, it's actually a small star. That one star is having so much. Now, of course, we can explain it in, in terms of the uh, the reactions that are, the nuclear reactions are taking place, which is causing out so much of heat and light being emanated from the sun, which is then eventually coming to us here. Um, but from one much of power. So what is that? And then think of it that there are billions of such stars. That means we don't even know. So we just said that so many billions of such stars. Sun is only one of them, a small star. But there is so much of energy coming out of that one star. So what does it talk about? It talks about the infinite power of God. Like God is so powerful to have... Um, what is that? Oh, oh, there's a phone here. Okay, so God is. Uh, you can put it on silent. Yes, thank you. So God is so infinite, right? Uh, uh, so that that itself is speaking to us about the power of God. Then we can look at again. We can look at things here. On Earth or in space, and think about the order in which everything happens. You know, so then we say, "Hey, there is so much of order. There is so much of um, design. You know, in what is happening. Right? It's not arbitrary. You know, the the planets, the stars, they're all held together. So we're saying it's speaking about order, about design." Uh, you know, and then we will again talk a little bit about this, about the precision in which everything is in place. He just talks about you know how amazing God is, that everything is actual in actual location in space, uh, and that's it's that's how life can happen here on Earth and so on. So when you look at all these things, they're pointing us to different attributes of God: the wisdom, the power. They they have some records and all. Uh, like, is it true? Uh, like, they found literally. Oh, when you, when you say like uh, they found what did they saw a cross somewhere or saw one dog somewhere, <laughs> if we, if you're talking about those things, those are just uh, imaginary because anybody can take a photo of the cloud and say, see, there is a dove, there is a cross. So if you're talking about those kinds of things, that is all imaginary, right? Like, thing, like, uh, like there is a Jesus blood, it's still alive, like it's it's getting viral in social media, like nothing. Why, uh, why, 
one scientist, uh, we, will, uh, we found the arc of point that was pretty popular to let the point be Yeah. So, and they are like still alive. They are like this. So, they are still alive. So, they are still So I don't know how real these things are because nowadays uh, you can generate any image you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so I, 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 first of all, you know, when we when we read these kinds of news articles. Um, uh, even though they are quote unquote trying to promote Christian faith, we have to question who wrote it and is it from a reliable source, right? Today, anybody can write anything, uh, either to, sub to support Christian faith, anything in the Bible. You can write, anybody can write, put it online, put some pictures, you can generate pictures, do it, generate videos, whatever. So you got to see, like, who reported this, right? Um, if Is it from a reliable person you know uh, and then uh, uh, is it actually verified by two or three reliable people so don't believe anything you read online even if it is from a quote unquote christian thing yeah you because know? people even christians can write stories and you know they sometimes create content just for the sake of creating things so be very careful what we read online so i i, I don't know about this for me these kinds of these things, like you know, uh, they don't matter. Yeah, right? they're like, okay, uh, who's going to go and verify? You know, uh, let's not even waste time on that. You know, so, um, I don't pay attention to those things. Yeah, but something that's really useful uh, in our journey. You know, can do. okay. Anyway, good. Um, Online, any questions? We we'll go for a break. If you don't have any questions, okay. Um, let's take a break and then we'll come back and uh, we'll continue on this. Okay, ten minutes. Thank you.